if I was going to identify a favorite piece, it would be the, the uh, Chrysler Building in New York City, as far as my favorite piece of architecture. The way the Chrysler Building shines in the sky, and then the gargoyles are there, and it's, and it's, uh, it's, ar it's architecture, it's, uh, it's, it's pristine, it, it shines, and uh, that is, that is uh, being at, on the Empire State Building to be able to look across and see that gargoyle, I mean, up front, well, as close to up front as you can get, but to see it overhanging and those points and, and the windows and the offices that come out onto those patio, I mean, onto those terrace areas to wish that I could spend, I wanna have an opportunity to get to that, those, those patios one day. And uh, you know, that, is, that is a piece of architecture that's always stood out in my mind. Most of my work is adaptive reuse and historic preservation. And I love working with older buildings that are part of, you know, have a long lifetime in the built environment. And there's always something unexpected that you discover during their, their restoration and rehabilitation. And it's those unexpected items, you know, whether it's an old work receipt that's fallen between the floorboards and is discovered and you can find out in 1919 what somebody was ordering you know, for lunch that day or a newspaper that's been hidden or a dollar bill even. You know, it's, it's interesting to find what, uh, what collects in the hidden spaces of a building over time. Buildings that are important to me, they're the ones that obviously not only stand up and keep out the rain, but provide that special sense of wonder and, and enjoyment and excitement. As a preservation architect, I suppose you would expect me to address Monticello or Mount Vernon or um, the wonderful Victorian courthouses all over the great state of Texas. Um, but I'm equally fascinated by modern architecture. And I think architecture um, runs across the ages as providing that wonderful quality of delight um, several years ago, the architects in the state of Texas were asked to come up with a building that they thought was the best building in the state. Uh, it's still one of my favorites. It's Louis Kahn's Kimball Art Museum. The thing I really like about the Kimball is those wonderful concrete vaults that, that repeat each other and, and spread and provide this wonderful, almost anonymous space. The building announces itself as a wonderful place to be. The quality of light on the interior is extraordinary. But once you're in the building, the building does this wonderful disappearing act and allows those things that are on display, the art and the artifacts, really to sort of shine and be the thing that you're aware of. After I graduated from college, I backpacked around Europe for, for a couple months. And I went to Barcelona and um, I went to the Sagrada Familia, and you can see it from any point in the city. It's just these amazing, huge towers, kind of looks like a sandcastle, amazing Gaudi building, just in insane. And I, it was raining, I had my umbrella, and on my camera trying to like shield, taking pictures, trying to take a picture of me with the, with the building in the background, just totally nerding out, architecture nerd written all over me. I spent probably about five hours just walking in. I wanted to touch things. I was taking pictures of things that only architecture nerds would, you know, would appreciate. Being an architect in, uh, in Philadelphia and going to school in Philadelphia and practicing in Philadelphia is a wonderful experience. There's a lot of history there. One of my favorite uh, um, places in the world is the Salk Institute that was designed by Louis Kahn, a Philadelphia architect that uh, I studied in school and has a great history. The, uh, um, the architecture, the way it's composed, the uh, masonry and the teak wood, the way it sets on the cliff um, and, and there's this path in, uh, over the cliff into the ocean is, is just magnificent. My favorite places are the, the interstitial spaces, the spaces created by accident that, um, you know, or the spaces that are used in unexpected ways and that when you go back and visit a building that you've worked on, you see that you know this little corner has become you know some student's favorite cubby hole, and now there are drawings all over the walls, and um, and just the way space is, is inhabited. I think as an end result, and because the users are infinitely more imaginative than you are. The real value is when you have an engineer and an architect all in one person, 
And I um, mentioned to him Santiago Calatrava and the phenomenal architectural work that he does and how his buildings are like images of birds and um, they're so evocative and they're so sensuous and they're just, they're amazing pieces of architecture and I have the greatest respect for him as a professional and as a designer and, and an artist and an architect and an engineer. You like that? <laughs> I thought you'd like that. That's why I thought I'd use that.